Hello, everybody. My name is Dr. Françoise Wilhelmi de Toledo. I am the scientific director of the fasting clinics Buchinger Wilhelmi in Überlingen, Lake Constance, south of Germany, and Marbella, south of Spain. I would like to highlight one aspect of a recently published review in Annals of Medicine we did with Francisca Grunder, my co-author, um, Cesare Sirtori and Massimiliano Ruccica, which are specialists in lipids from the um, Dyslipidemia Center in Niguarda, Milan. We have put a classification of fasting and nutritional strategies, which I would like to review for you and with you. The beginning of the scientific documentation of fasting started at the beginning of the 20th century, where it was seen that the people could fast even until 31 days. That was in um, the studies of Benedict, and that the people could leave this uh, one subject who was observed was not even overweight. So, being able to leave out of your own fat reserves was something that was discovered like suddenly as totally possible. Then in the 60s, we had uh, the use of long-term fasting over 100 days for morbid obesity, extremely obese people. And at the beginning of the 21st century, we are very focused on intermittent fasting, rediscovering long-term fasting to therapeutical reasons, not only for weight loss, but also for a lot of other reasons, uh, which we are going to review together. So it started um, with the calorie restriction. That was documented uh, by many researchers who showed in all types of animals, including humans, that calorie restriction was one method, one praxis, which allowed you to have a, at least 10 or 12 different effects. Weight loss, diminution of abdominal circumference, normalization of glucose and lipid metabolism, um, enhancement of mood, um, enhancement of uric acid and afterwards diminution of the uric acid changes in the liver metabolism, a diminution of the size of the organ, followed by a regeneration of the organ. So this was really viewed as a perspective for medicine and for people to live very long in good health. Calorie restriction means you eat less. So in animals, in labs, it's easy to do it. You reduce their um, the quantity of food you give them um, about 30%. In humans, some are compliant and can do it, and they seem to have advantages from it and their health. It has been very good documented. Um, but at the same time, it's really not easy to be always reducing the food you would eat normally, because we live in an age where obesity is important. And uh, already to eat normally is not easy. So if you want to eat less than normal, this is still more complicated. So some researchers had the intuition, let's try to put animals, even yeast, to periods where they get no food at all. And this succeeded. And it was understood that when you stop eating, uh, then you have, in, in, in a shorter period, the effects you have by chronic calorie restriction. And so, this way was suddenly studied. It was really fascinating. What did they discover? Um, that, for instance, when you stop eating during 16 hours and you eat only during eight hours, you can also change the proportion 40 hours and 10 hours or 12 and 12. But at least to make a long pause, this is called time-restricted eating. It's part of intermittent fasting, short periods of fasting. And this leads to the metabolic switch. This is you stop using glucose as main fuel. Glucose comes from the meal. The meals don't come for some hours and maybe some days. And so you switch to the use of your endogenous fat out of your stores, fat stores, fat tissues, 
and part of this fat is transformed into ketone bodies and the ketone bodies have an extraordinary effect on the brain. Um, it stimulates the cognition uh, in animals and in humans and it enhances also the brain plasticity so the neurons are better connected and so you, you notice that um, the, the, the brain activity and the brain function is bettered and also some very positive effects on neurological diseases like epilepsy in children, uh, like uh, Parkinson and Alzheimer in several animal models. Uh, which give hope that uh, introducing these type of models um, uh, or type of regimens of fasting in, in life of people will have really extreme therapeutic effects. Two types of fasting, intermittent fasting, are described. Alternate day fast, this means eat one day, fast one day, eat one day, eat one day, not eat the next, and eat one day, etc. This is uh, made a lot in animal models in labs for research uh, purposes. Some humans do that, but it's not very easy. Uh, if you do that, then you get all these benefits of reducing weight, reducing uh, the risk factors for cardiovascular diseases, normalizing lipid and, and sugar um, metabolism, but also uh, enhancing uh, the um, antioxidant capacity of the body. We have a video especially on that, um, diminishing the inflammatory processes, everything that is painful, swollen, or rigid in the body. So for instance, arthritis and many other, um, almost all the diseases have an inflammatory component. So this is extremely therapeutical effects that are not linked only to weight loss for obese people, but you get that also in normal weighted people. And this is the very, very new uh, findings, fasting used for therapeutic reason for weight loss. This is therapeutic in many cases because it's linked to metabolic improvement, but not only that, direct action on inflammatory process and it stimulates a very important mechanism in the body. This is the autophagy and the apoptosis, the capacity of our body to eliminate aged and um, damaged structures, even whole cells, to recycle them or to eliminate part of the component and re rebuild them new from new synthesis or from stem cells. And this happens during the fasting, but mostly after the fasting. So. This is an extraordinary finding from the research of today, is that in the fasting you have a sort of atrophy of the organs and the word atrophy sounds dramatic because you think it's abnormal. It, by people who eat, atrophy is not normal. But during the fasting, it's a dynamic process. You atrophy, you diminish, for instance, the size of the liver of almost 50%, this has been calculated in animals, and then after the fasting, you can rebuild it. Of course, if you fast for short, it's not going to be that dramatic, but um, you have this extraordinary possibility to shrink your organs and to expand them with new cells or rejuvenate theoretically and practically your tissues and even your organs. All that is now um, tested on animals but uh, we work as clinicians with uh, humans and know that is totally plausible that by humans it's going to be once demonstrated that it's the same. Um, the problem with animals is that if you have small animals that are not obese like mice, uh, it's difficult to say what a day for a mouse is compared to a day for an adult human. Uh, maybe one day for a mouse is about one week for a human. So the correspondences are not so easy to do for make recommendations to humans. But this is work in progress. Um, almost more research is being done. And we participate in our clinics, Pochinga Wilhelmi, with um, the possibility of observing clinically human beings in observational studies. 
which we published. And in the description of this video, you will find the list of our publications. Another type of intermittent fasting uh, um, is the 5-2. This is just the um, uh, rediscovering that it's good one or two days per week uh, not to eat too much. So reducing your food intake to 600 calories, which is not a fasting. It's a very low calorie diet if you want, but uh, this is a good practice. This is rejoining the um, religions. They all have uh, adv advice to reduce the food or to restrict the food during several periods, sometimes very strict, sometimes going to the point of fasting, uh, not even drinking water. But um, uh, most of the time it is the um, nutritional restrictions. So we are in faith science is rediscovering in animal models what religions knew since always uh, in humans. And then um, next to the intermittent fasting, which is not so much studied in research because it's very much based on animal research. And the ethical committees are very afraid of long-term fasting. But uh, in the Buchinger Wilhelmi Clinics, we have a tradition of 100 years. Our founder, Dr. Otto Buchinger, um, put up a method of fasting, uh, long-term fasting, after having been cured himself from a rheumatic fever, a sort of polyarthritis, during 19 days of fasting. And uh, this is our tradition. We have a multidisciplinary program, uh, pro, uh, packages of five days, 10 days, 15 days, 20 days of fasting, always followed by a period of slow reintroduction of food. And this is medically supervised with the multidisciplinary staff. People move, people have a, a whole um, um, methodology to be taken care of. Um, Long-term fasting, like the Buchinger Wilhelmi clinics practice it, uh, has been now uh, scientifically documented. We have shown that the fatty liver uh, um, improves, that the microbiome turns, uh, changes and um, transitionally and can go back to normal afterwards. Uh, we, have, um, we, have, we are preparing uh, studies on safety, on blood pressure, on cholesterol and all these clinical factors. Uh, trying also to see what is happening on other levels. Because the most extraordinary thing we have in the 21st century is that the, the fasting is not only studied on this clinical level, but also in the genetical level. And researchers now look what gene or gene segment is turned off, turned on when you stop eating. And the signaling pathways, which are linked to nutrients, especially proteins and, and um, carbohydrates, are very intensely studied. So this means when you stop eating proteins or carbohydrates, then you, 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 you have a cascade of uh, genetic pathways which change. You change totally your genetic lead of your metabolism and this uh, brings you in the fasting mode, where you're in a protected mode, where you are activating autophagy, uh, recycling, uh, regeneration, rejuvenation, diminishing of inflammation, um, prolonging lifespan, normalizing metabolism. This is uh, the long-term fasting which we describe in the review uh, published in Annals of Medicine, um, unraveling the health effect of fasting, a long road from obesity treatment. This was in the 60s. Uh, it's not done anymore. It has been replaced by the uh, very low calorie diets or the protein diets, uh, formula diets, um, to healthy lifespan increase and improve cognition. This is the way we approach fasting and long-term fasting today, which we have in our tradition of 100 years since long time, but now science can document the effects um, that it's done for normal weighted people, for overweight people, and it's done to increase lifespan. So to um, diminish or prevent the diseases linked to aging, which are metabolic disorders, um, diabetes type 2, uh, cancer, Alzheimer, Parkinson, and many other diseases because it seems that the fasting properly done in the right 
quantity and the right length and the right supervision um, can practically uh, be used, maybe complementary or um, as the method to normalize um, conditions, pathological conditions and enhance health. So we have the calorie restriction, the short-term fasting, intermittent fasting, and now long-term fasting. And in every time where fasting comes up again and is a trend, you have industrial products who bring up diets or drugs who try to emit some of the effects of fasting. Of course, not the totality of it, because fasting is a is a multidimensional uh, practice. It has the physical aspect, it has the community aspect, and it has also the spiritual, social, emotional aspect. And a drug can, of course, not replace all that. A diet, if you do it properly, can be very useful. Um, but it's not going to do the same effect exactly than fasting, but it can in some diseases be being special, especially tailored for a disease without having to do the fasting. If people are already too underweight or sarcopenic, then these diets are going to be certainly very useful. But my proposal to you is um, that you're interested in your own metabolism. The old possibilities that your own body, your own metabolism is offering and your genetic switch, the genetic pathway that just orchestrate the fasting. When you fast, you're not like a person who eats and has no food, but you are a person who switches from the mode of eating outside food to the mode of being nourished by your fat and part of the proteic tissues which you are going to recycle and regenerate new after the fasting. So try it, find a good guidance, find a place where you can be taken care of, especially if you do it therapeutically, you cannot do it alone. Um, it is powerful and at the same time has risks. This is why you need a specialized um, guidance and uh, I wish that this uh, talk has interested you. You can um, look at the description. We'll put a lot of interesting information. You can read the review uh, published in Annals of Medicine. And if you want to subscribe to our channel, then you will be informed on a regular basis of all films and publications we are doing from the Buchinger Wilhelmi Clinics. I thank you for your attention. Stay tuned for more videos. Mm -hmm.